How does the idea of financial freedom make you feel? Not just the fantasy, but the idea of working by choice and having zero financial demands. My name is Michael Morrow. I'm a financial advisor who's been working in the field for seven years. I help out everyone, from the auto mechanic to the doctor, of looking at ways to how to improve their financial health. A major observation I've made through my time is that people don't know what they don't know. I look at my role as both an educator as well as an advisor in ways to removing anxiety and allowing people to take the next step towards their financial goals, mainly retirement. Two of the biggest and most common pitfalls I see people making is they don't take planning serious because their goals are so far in the future. They fail to consider potential improvements because they're overconsumed with the aspects of their day-to-day -day lives. As people, our responsibilities pull us in many directions, oftentimes pushing us off course. And at many times, we don't address our needs or goals because they oftentimes get pushed to the back burner. I commonly refer to this as kicking the can down the road or the inertia effect. It breaks my heart to see people in financial difficulties because either they didn't know any better or they failed to consider the important aspects of delaying their plans. In 2014, Edward Jones, Edward Jones, a financial firm, conducted a survey of a thousand Americans. Their objective was to figure out how people in America approach goals-based planning. Things like buying a new car, higher education, vacations, and retirement. The results were telling. 28% of Americans spent more time planning their vacation, while 25% spent more time planning for retirement. From an emotional aspect, this makes sense because vacations are fun and enjoyable. Well, looking at things like retirement can be difficult because you're delaying your fun now for the potential financial freedom in the future. From a logical sense, it makes no sense at all because vacations only last two weeks, maybe. Well, retirement is, is probably gonna last 30 years or more. Looking at a simple projection, the results are profound. Using an assumed 6% achievable rate of return every year, if you began saving $500 at age 25, at 65, you have a million dollars. If you did nothing until 50 and started saving then, you would have to save about 3,500 bucks a month until 65 to reach that same million dollar mark. Now, you say to yourself, this is good information, it's interesting, but I can't save that kind of money. A 2016 report analyzing incomes and spending information from households in the US, which was conducted by the National Bureau of Labor and Statistics, is also profound. It shows that high in income households have some commonalities and some differences. The commonality is that we all spend our money in three key areas, which would be our housing, our transportation, and our food. So that's the, the equal. But the differences are that low income households spend much more proportionately on their housing, while higher income earners spend much more on things like insurance expenses, as well as retirement expenses or savings. Now, let me help change the way you think, because this is the most important part. You must be a hawk at how you spend your money. Can we possibly save more now? That's what you need to understand. Can we spend less money on a fancy car and extravagant dinners? Of course. We must value the quality of life and making things special and important, but we must know our boundaries. We must create some kind of a line in the sand here. Also, let's change the way we think of things in terms of financial jargon. It's easy to get lost with sophisticated words. Let's, let me help you define those words and maybe help you better think of what these words actually mean. Consumption means consuming or consume, the end of life. So you eat a banana, the banana is dead. It adds value to your body through nutrition, but that's the example. It, it's gone, it's dead. Unless you make an investment, that is a key difference. Investments. Uh, investment is a well-considered contribution towards future gain. Fee, additional cost. Oftentimes, the cost of convenience, you are paying for what you choose not to do or things you can't do on your own. Tax, additional cost. Don't get me started. Interest, also an additional cost. The price you pay to borrow. 
not always bad if you do it the right way. Be sure to consider all additional costs before you pull the trigger on a financial decision. Lastly, let's use this important information to start making changes now. Don't be a victim of poor planning and poor decision making. Start looking at your spending. Where can you make improvements? Let's allow ourselves to start planning for the future. You're in the driver's seat of your life, and the decisions are the engine that propels the car. Remember that. Just like physical health, financial health is important. Checkups and early screenings will help prevent long-term and irreversible harm. Thank you.